Your depression is being used against you. The whole idea of depression is that you've got this pathology and it's usually defined as having low serotonin, chemical imbalance in the brain. And that's sure, man, that's one way of looking at it and it's not technically wrong. And you don't have to accept it either. The human mind is so incredibly powerful that whatever you identify with is what's gonna be the most profound effect of your entire reality. Did you know that an estimated 14.5 million US adults have experienced depression with severe impairment just in the past year. That's a lot. Chances are depression has touched you in the same way. And if it hasn't, most likely it will. So who am I to even talk about this? I'm Troy McClure. Well, I'm just a dude who's gone through depression like many other people. I went pretty far down that road until not so very nice thoughts started to come up and I kind of just wanted to end it. And I stayed in this dark hole for a very, very long time and, you know, went through ups and downs because I've, I've kind of talked about this on my channel, but I want to just skip ahead a decade or two. Even in, in the last year, I started to have depression. And this is the first time that I had proper depression for years, maybe three, four years. I thought I was finally free from it. I was like, oh shit, maybe depression is inevitable. Oh, maybe you can't really beat it. Oh no, Pfizer help me. I'm gonna give you a definition of depression that I, I think is more accurate than even the most scientific one, even though it's totally not technically correct at all because it's completely poetic and theatrical. Nonetheless, doesn't mean it ain't any less true. Depression is your soul going on strike living a fake life. And I know that some people are going to be like, oh, what about people with severe depression? And they actually have a neurological disorder. No, no, no. It's like, all right, listen, you can, you can always go into the outlier. You can always go to the, the extreme case, but life ain't that simple. And even then, even in the most extreme cases, to some degree, I think this is still true. Because think about this, diet, number one, right? Like the gut is, I hope you know this by now. I'm sure you do. The gut produces more serotonin than the brain itself. What does this mean? This means that the quality of food that you put into your body is going to determine the quality of mental health. Okay, yeah, cool. Duh. But why is our modern diet so caca poo poo? You know, like we know we have more knowledge than ever before, but we're still choosing to design this society in a way that keeps you sick. And then they'll bamboozle you into thinking, oh, you actually need this medication. But really it was like, 10 other factors that are, that's affecting your depression more. And again, I'm not, this is not black and white, I'm not anti this straight up, but I am anti, you know, it's not necessary for the vast majority of cases. And I know for a fact, like even from a purely scientific data perspective, there are a few methods that are just straight up more effective than your traditional mode. I, I'm, I know I'm being kind of cryptic, but you know what I'm talking about. I just don't want to say it over and over again. And then YouTube's like, Oh, how dare you? The Doctor Association has sued you, your mate Tom. Take down this video so we can keep people depressed. <laughs> we don't want to go fool Alex Jones and think that, oh, it's all a malevolent, evil plan to keep you sick. And I think maybe on some level, like if you go to the top, to the top, to the top, elite, 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 you know, if you believe in that and they're controlling the world or whatever, okay, they're going to they're gonna obviously set up systems and programs to make everyone believe what they want them to believe. But I think, for example, just your everyday, you know, like your, your doctor, your pharmacist, that they, I think they genuinely believe what they believe. I don't put this against anyone. I think ultimately most of us, at least, I hope, this could be naive of me to say, but I hope that most people have good intentions. Whether they produce good actions, that's a whole different thing. Because, you know, as the saying goes, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And the reason why I'm kind of ranting about this a little bit is because I went on a Google search. I'm like, all right, what are the best, what are the mainstream advice for treating depression? Because I come from the belief that most conventional wisdom is wrong. Sometimes I get proven wrong on that, but sometimes I get proven absolutely right because I did my Google search. The first page that I hit and the first step was like, go see your GP. <laughs> Seriously, number one? Wow, like I, I would have thought exercise, changing your diet, at least these two would have been above 
you know, go see your GP. You know, the guy who's not an expert in mental health at all? That guy. <laughs> you got to see that guy. Like when I said earlier, depression is your soul on strike for living a fake life. I think this is true because even when we eat like shit, we're living a fake life. We're fooling our brain into thinking that this is actually acceptable to put into our body, but in reality, it's completely destroying our nervous system, hijacking our thoughts, causing us to make more irrational decisions, putting more poisons into our body, right? It just, it keeps going and going and going and going. Have you ever noticed how defensive people are from their identity? It's like they want to be depressed, right? Even right now, people are gonna, I'm sure, I'm sure people are gonna attack me right now of how, what, ignorant, dangerous advice that I'm saying. And these are gonna be people who are depressed, right? And these are gonna be from people who are like really depressed. And it's like, dude, you're literally depressed right now and you're attacking someone who used to be depressed and overcome it, but you're attacking me. Like, do, like we don't even have to go through specific points and arguments and who's right or who's wrong because that's a completely wrong competitive frame that just ends up swinging the emotional pendulum back and forth into infinity. That's why I don't gossip and partake in drama because it never ends. So if it makes you feel better, okay, fine. I'm a fool. What do I know? Ah, seriously, what the fuck do I know, right? I want you to think about this for a moment. Think about your soul, the witness behind your thoughts, the real you, not this small ego self that you identify with, but the essence of who you are. This is what is getting snuffed out in our modern society. And when your soul has enough, when you live a fake life for too long, whether it's hanging out with people that you know aren't congruent with your values, or you're working a job that you know isn't what you're, you're not supposed to be doing forever, whether it's eating like crap or just escaping reality and doing drugs or whatever it is, when you live a fake life long enough, your soul has enough. It's like, nah, I'm not doing this anymore. Your body starts to get exhausted. Your nervous system shuts down. And what do we do? Instead of reorganizing and redirecting our life path, we hijack the biology. Could be through coffee. Could be through more escapist methods. Could be through medication but you're still doing all the things that are actually making you depressed, but then you do this pill, you feel better, right? You get a serotonin boost, and then you hear someone like me talking, not completely negative about these things, but for the most part, outside of like really, really severe situations, I don't think that pills should be your first option, nor do I think it should be your second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh option. I think it should like go down the list a little bit, before you go there. But then again, I'm not wearing a white lab coat, so don't worry about it, mate. Take all the drugs you want. Depression could speak, it would say something like this. <sighs> Dude, please, I, I can't do this anymore. I, I'm exhausted. Seriously, I, I just can't. You're going down this direction and it's, it's not gonna end well, I promise you. So please, just stop. Just stop for a moment. Reorganize your life. Do a re-evaluation of who you are. Do some introspection. Get your priorities straight and then take action towards that. Until then, I'm gonna keep bugging you, mate. I'm sorry. It's for your own good. Something like that, right? Depression isn't just this negative, terrible thing that was created because God hates you. And no matter how much you're suffering in your head and how horrible this is, and I've been to that point of almost no return. It's not pretty. But what I will say is that depression is, usually produces so much more suffering in your mind than what it actually does in reality. And I'm not saying just because you suffer in your mind, therefore it's not valid. I think it's incredibly harmful when people do this, where they just, dis they don't acknowledge people's pain. It's like, oh, you're just weak, or whatever, you know. No, this, this ain't what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that there is a positive transformative quality about depression if you allow it just don't listen to the voices of society who are unconsciously programming you to stay in this box stop staying here man like is it like really like are you, is it just because you're is it just because you're comfortable and staying in this box because it's just what you know i don't know it's like a prostitute 
who keeps hanging out with their pimp even though he beats her, but because he gives her a nice warm bath and it's all he knows, they stay. That's you in depression right now. This is depression is like almost like Stockholm syndrome. We start to fall in love with your captor. So I want to leave you with three practical main keys to break the shackles of depression. First step is to reorganize your life. Reflect on yourself. Ask questions. What's giving me energy today? What's draining my energy? What am I learning? Even just these three questions asking every day. And then also, what are three things that I'm grateful for? This ain't gonna fix everything straight away, but it's a process. Second main key, watch your freaking language. Don't identify, don't say things like, I'm depressed, my depression. Literally just changing your language around it is gonna make a world of difference in your quality of life. This heaviness is flowing through my body right now, right? Use non-attached language. Don't use, I'm depressed. That's the worst one you can, you can do. Be very conscious and aware of the words that you are saying on a daily basis because your words cast spells and that creates your identity, and your identity creates your reality. More specifically, the attracts the reality that you resonate with, that you are aligned with internally. Most people are completely unaligned, which is why depression happens, and all these mental disorders. And the third key, and I even hate to say it, but it's gotta be said, and that's treat your body like a temple temple that you respect, that you revere. And that's how the world uses depression against you, right? It's how they keep you in control. By throwing more chaos and confusion and disruption and deterring you from the path. But it's part of the game, okay? So it's, it's all good either way. But it can be frustrating at times, can't it? I'm depressed, but it's like, no, you just, you have a certain brain type and you're not optimizing your life in a way that is congruent with your personality. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, cheerio.